and welcome back to the Five Minute Museum, Tuesdays at 2. Today we are not in the museum at Oglethorpe. We are actually in the Hansel Room, which is in Lupton Hall. And this is, um, we're in the Hansel Room in Lupton Hall, and I'm actually in the President's um, Conference Room. So thanks to Dr. Nicholas Ladani for allowing us to do this. And thanks to him, too, for encouraging the staff at the museum to install artwork all over this campus. There had been artwork on the campus, certainly, but now we have artwork all throughout the Hansel Room. We have things in the trustee room, which we did before. We have work that's going into Bimby. We have work that's going all over the place and a great rotation of things that also reflect student work and our commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion. So it's really exciting. So today, um, in honor of this gorgeous, incredible spring day in April, we are in Hansel looking at the work of Jules Cavalle. Cavalle is a Frenchman, as you could probably tell, born in 1901 in the small uh, town in the south of France of Carmeau. Um, he was educated in the town of Albi, another small town in the south of France. Um, and his parents initially wanted him to be a, a businessman. So, you know, uh, Oglethorpe students can appreciate this, um, wanting to be in the arts, but maybe getting pushed to do something that is uh, not quite in the arts, right? And he um, ended up studying decorative arts and also studying um, uh, to be a draftsman and was an incredible draftsman. So he did this early in his career. In about 1923, he was encouraged to study in Paris and um, he uh, traveled to Paris to study at the Academy Julien uh, from 1923 until 1925. And he um, was still struggling. Uh, after 1925, he was still selling his work, but he was having some trouble. And so he and his wife opened a grocery store. <laughs> so they had a grocery store in Paris while they were trying to make a, make a go of it. Um, he became friends with several artists of the day, including uh, Vlamenc, who's also represented in our collection, um, uh, Durand Renoir, who you may have heard of, um, and uh, Matisse, another, another big name, Chagall was a friend as well. And later on, he got to know uh, an incredible artist named Bonnard. And Bonnard's work really, really influenced him. So what you um, see behind me, and actually uh, to my right and my left, there is a work by, um, by Cavalier here, and there's another, I'm just turning this a little bit, a really beautiful still life uh, over my left shoulder as well. So we, have two, we have two pieces in the collection that are by Cavalier. Everything in this room, actually, so a couple of pieces by Cavalier, a Guillaume, two by Mofra, and a Dutch painting that by Everett Moll, all came to us through um, the good graces of uh, doctors La Yolanta and Isaac Malamed. Um, let's see, so he was at Academy Julien through the 30s. He started to, um, to do more and more work and he ended up getting in 1936 a Blumenthal grant. And at long last, he was able to really focus on his work. Um, his work was not, as you might think, impressionist. Um, Yes, he was influenced and he knew of the Impressionists, but he was born, I think he was born in 1901, so that would be a good 25, 30 years after uh, the, the height of the Impressionist movement. He was really influenced by, initially by Vlamenc, Matisse, those who were fauves. And the fauves um, were given this name, which was rather derogatory, uh, as was Impressionism, the name Impressionism, uh, given to them uh, by critics who thought that the work looked like that of wild beasts. Um, that they couldn't see color properly and it was wild and you know um, Matisse's woman with a green stripe she has a stripe straight down the center of her face was a great example of that and these are artists who used color uh, to block out form to to create form so they would bl use deep blue for a, a shadow or something like this in these planes of the face and were very very vibrant colors not so um, Cavalier. So he was influenced by them, but he was neither an Impressionist nor was he a fauve. He, his work was considered poetic realism. The poetic realists, uh, the, the movement came about between the world wars. Um, they were interested in embracing the joy of life, which is why I wanted to talk about this on a beautiful sunny day. Um, the joy of living, the joie de vivre, and the just the pure color um, 
approximation uh, and these beautiful, beautiful colors. So, and the work of Bonnard, you can see his influence in not only the palette that Cavaille used, but also in his, um, the way that he would separate colors on the canvas with lots of space in between. Um, throughout the 50s, Cavaille uh, exhibited and became widely known. He exhibited not only in Paris, but in London and Geneva and Brussels. Uh, he owned a house in Normandy, might be nice and um, received his friends there who also included, again, uh, Bonnard, Flaminck, uh, Brock was a good friend. And at the end of his life, um, he made many, many trips to Europe. He also traveled to Japan and to New York uh, and did quite well. He got the um, Prix de Rome, uh, he received that later in life. And he passed away in, um, oh, and he passed away in France in uh, uh, 1977. Uh, the other thing about his life that's interesting is during World War II, he became part of the French resistance and moved back to his small, his small town and was involved there. He also became a professor uh, after the war. He, he taught decorative arts. So there's a little bit about Cavaillé. I think I've gone over by a couple of minutes, but you know, the enthusiasm flows. Um, and I'd love to see you next week. Next week we're going to uh, come to you live from the museum once again, this time with John Tilford speaking to you about um, works of art that have come to us through the Ellerkman and Riles family. Thanks, y'all. Have a great week.